Hello there. So today is the day where the Saab 2.3 Turbo and the Vauxhall Frontier four-wheel drive gearbox are going in my UAS. Currently about one degree. Uh, it's not very pleasant down the barn because whatever it is outside, it is inside and all my tools are and everything bloody cold. So I've spent the last few evenings in very cold temperatures. Did I, did I mention it was cold? I'll probably mention it a lot in this video. Anyway, I've spent the last few evenings painting the floor and the engine mounts etc. So they're not bare metal anymore. I've also been painting the parts off the car. These various engine mounts etc. They're all painted. So before I fit the gearbox to the engine I need to do something which is a little bit bizarre and I've taken a few attempts to try and explain it. Hopefully this makes sense. Welcome to class everyone. Settle down. Uh, this will be one of them whiteboard presentations where I'm mainly making it up. Prop shafts. So, on things with solid live axles like the UAS, as the axle moves up and down, this distance is going to get shorter, isn't it? Triangles, you know, less suspension travels up, this distance gets shorter. Agreed? Yeah, good. So as the axle travels up in the suspension travel, the prop shaft needs to get shorter. And there's two ways of doing that. It's either done in the tail end of the gearbox and the prop output flange basically slides in and out as the suspension travels up and down. Or you have a slider built into the prop shaft, which is what the UAS has. So this is the what the UAS has as standard, and this is a sliding portion built into the prop. This is my custom prop shaft. Now on the back end of the Frontier gearbox, there, as you can see, there's nowhere to mount a uh, flange or anything. What the f the front end of the prop would have looked like on the Frontier would have just been a splined portion. This is off a different Vauxhall box, but happens to fit. Now I didn't get a prop with this box and I could have bought one but as I'm about to explain I didn't because I didn't think it would work but if you discount this flange this would have been the front end of the standard prop the axle went up and down it would slide in and out so this brings me on to the next thing I'm unsure about this is a representation of the Vauxhall Frontier setup that is your axle that's the gearbox that's the engine the axle setup on that is coil sprung and it's got some sort of like link arms, some sort of four link setup. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not important. What, I, what is important though is that the output shaft on the box, the splined portion, is only 25mm of like usable spline section on that before you risk the prop falling out. The UAS is leaf sprung and the UAS runs quite a steep prop angle because it's pretty high and jacked up, isn't it? Now, the UAS prop shaft has 40 mil of splined portion in it to accommodate the axle going up and down. What I'm thinking is that the Frontier got away with having just a small amount of spline section, 25 mil ish because it's got these long link arms which pivot quite close to the gearbox output. This is just a theory, this could be totally wrong, but I think I'm onto something. With the UAS being leaf sprung, I believe the axle, there's no real pivot. So as that goes up and down, the length variation of the prop shaft is larger than if it was on a coil sprung setup like this. Basically what I'm getting at is I do not think 25mm is enough sliding portion for the leaf sprung setup on this to work. So what I am doing is I am mounting the output which is splined on the Frontier box with no mounting bolts or anything, I'm adding a stud to it via a welder. That output flange will then be fixed in the back of the Frontier box. The sliding section will all be taken up by the custom prop shaft I've had made. That's got a 50mm sliding portion in it. Is this 100% the way it should be done? Absolutely no idea, as per usual. Who's done this before? Nobody. I can't look on any forums. This isn't a Honda swap. This is me making it up as I go along. Could be wrong, roast me in the comments. 
Okay, welcome to the tail shaft of the gearbox. Uh, yeah, like I said, I've welded a stud to it. Uh, there was a bit of a, like an indent in there, so I managed to turn this down the lathe slightly, push it in so it was relatively central, tack it in place, then weld it in place. It's going to do the job. Then what I found was when I slid this on and tightened this up, this actually bottomed out against something and stopped the box from turning. Uh, this is a straight through... Uh, basically, this is off one of the Vauxhall Auto boxes I've got kicking around. So it's not for this, so it doesn't really work. So what I did was put a washer inside, which is the right size, slid this on until it bottomed out, and then brought it back a millimetre, and I welded that washer in place. Do you get me? Beautiful. So now this slides on all the way, tight up against that seal. This washer goes on, and then this 10 mil, um, 10 mil, this M10 goes on, bolts it all up in place. Will it work? Who bloody knows? Despite it looking like I've got a real lack in confidence in my idea, I'm actually very confident that this idea will work, and I don't foresee any issues with this spline output being held in with a 17 mil nut. There's actually ice in this. Please join my Patreon to allow me to afford to put antifreeze in my drinks to stop this happening ever again. To fit the Saab engine to a Vauxhall gearbox, you typically have to use a spacer behind the concentric slave cylinder to push it out 19 millimeters. Now, this doesn't have a concentric slave cylinder. As you can see, this has a conventional clutch arm. It would be a bit tricky to space that out. So, what you can do is you can fit a thicker flywheel. And what has a thicker flywheel? A Saab 9.5. This is a conventional Saab flywheel. And this is a 9.5 flywheel. Which then brings me on to the next little issue, and that is, this is a Vauxhall Omega input shaft. Uh, it fits up to the typical Saab 9900-93 clutches. It is 14 splines. This is a Frontera. This is 24 splines. Now, it was only thanks to Tommy at TR Autos uh, who lent me a Saab Vigen clutch so I could try it against various flywheels and gearboxes that I realised that the Frontera box has got the wrong spline count. So I was all for ordering the wrong bloody clutch. Luckily, thanks to Tommy, I didn't. And then I got to speak into a guy who is building a Saab-powered Suzuki Samurai with a Vauxhall Frontera box. And he had this, which I could buy off him, which is a 240mm diameter, 24 spline, brand new friction disc. All right. So being uh, I was a little bit wary about buying all the wrong stuff, the pressure plate I have for the clutch and flywheel setup is from a Saab 9.5, and it's actually a second-hand used one. Uh, it came with the flywheel. Uh, but I'm going to fit it anyway, and if it slips, I uh, will fit a new one. And one more thing, spigot bearing. You need a Vauxhall Carlton Omega spigot bearing. Uh, if you don't know what that is, the input shaft of a rear-wheel drive, four-wheel drive gearbox, is quite long and unsupported, so they put a little bearing on the end of it, which actually lives in the back of the crank. Quick summary, Saab engine to a Vauxhall Frontier gearbox, you need a Saab 9.5 flywheel and pressure plate, you need a Vauxhall Frontier 240mm friction plate, and then you need a Carlton Omega, probably Frontier, I don't know, spigot bearing. Cheers, let's put it together. 
just out of curiosity, this is what the engine and box weigh. There's obviously no manifolds on it or whatever, but yeah, 210 kilos. Be interesting to find out what the original setup weighed. I reckon it might actually end up being heavier because the box on that. Holy crap, the box was heavy. Nice. Right, I'm popping home for the evening. You guys sit tight, I'll be back at the barn in less than 10 seconds. The sun is out, it's a lovely day. I'm back at the barn. For some reason, it's four degrees colder, but it's not like me to even bring up the cold, never mind complain about it. Anyway, let's get this engine unboxing. Okay, I've just got my engine steady bracing. Uh, that's holding the engine up now. It's off the trolley. And then if you can just about see the strap wrapped around the chassis a few times, then underneath the box. That will hold that up. I'm gonna lift the whole van up in the air, the engine and box with it. And then this is gonna go underneath the gearbox to allow me to fit the gearbox mount in position. Then I'm gonna do the engine mounts. Should be fine. Off to a time lapse. I've just put that side engine mount on and then uh, what I realised is that because I've spaced the gearbox mount so far apart that actually this engine will support itself with just three mounts. Alright that's it, engine and box are back in the bay. I'm just going to do one more thing and that is check if the prop shaft fits. Oof, it fits. Now it does look like quite a extreme angle to me. Now I said to the prop shaft shop the angles it's running at and they said it should be fine. And uh, it's looking like I don't have to clear at any clearance here. I thought I might have to, but it's looking all right. If anyone wants to see the angles I'm working at, uh, I got the tail end of the gearbox pointing 2.4 degrees down, the nose of the axle two degrees up, um, the internet says they should be they cancel each other out, but that's as close as I could get in the end. And the prop is running 17 degrees up, right? But because that's pointing up and that's pointing down, you actually take that, that off. So it's the prop is running at 15 degrees, and that's with no weight on the wheel, so it shouldn't really ever run at that angle. Anyway, hopefully it's going to be fine. So engine and box are back in the U.S. where hopefully they should remain. Uh, I can just bolt on manifolds, turbo, make the exhaust, boost pipes, charge cooler, charge cooler piping, radiator piping, radiator, the list goes on. We're not finished yet, but hopefully uh, I've broken the back of the project and this is the major work done and it's more of a simpler assembly project from here on in. Uh, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, as per usual, I've got hours of footage and I hopefully condense it down into something you can watch whilst you're having a poop. Catch me in the next one where the work will continue. Cheers. Bye.